yeah, so this is where the personal hygiene piece really comes into it and uh, making sure that I think the first thing really is the members are able to recognize and report new skin rashes, features of ringworm, um, impetigo and herpes that they know to spot those and they know that they shouldn't be ro rolling with other members while they've got those infections. And that, that's really key. And that, that isn't this big taboo. It's not this, you know, and they feel comfortable kind of, they're bringing that out in the open and they're, you know, not going to be hiding that away. That's really key. Um, and then I think you've also got to think about how your gym members, not just interact with the map, but also all the other facilities in that gym, other what we call touch points where those infections can live on surfaces. So you've, you've got to, I mean, let's, as an average bloke that uses urinals in pubs, I know that some people's level of personal hygiene is at rock bottom. On it. And you've <laughs> probably experienced this. I've sat, I've stood there at the urinal in the pub and some bloke will, will, will fly in and it's more of a jewelry heist, right? He goes in, he does his, he gets his tackle out, he wheezes, gone, zipped up, he's out of there. It's literally all over within 20 seconds. It's like a, it's like a military operation and he's not touched. There's no soap or water involved at any point. And then he'll go straight to the bar and he'll stick his hands in the nuts. Not his nuts, sorry, but the, the bar nuts. <laughs> Probably both. <All> there. <laughs> <laughs> One after the other nut. Yeah. All the jelly beans, whatever's on there. And they've done studies. They've swabbed those. Oh, but man, I've it's seen horrendous. it. It's disgusting. Oh, man. my God. It's for, for urine. And I think they got rid of them now, though, haven't they? Most yeah, most places exactly. now like never exactly. have that, do so they? That's, but that's what you're up against. Yeah, like you say, most blokes are pretty switched on now. They will be washing their hands. But there's always that you know 5% who are going to be seeding infection everywhere. And like I can say your hands are your ultimate touch point. This is why hand hygiene is such an underrated, undersold thing. We're really on it in, in healthcare, but perhaps some gyms need to be more on the, on the ball with this because your hands are, are unique. When you, when you pick up a, a bacteria or virus or fungal spore on your hands, you touch so many different things all kinds of surfaces that other people will also go on and touch. That's what we call fomite spread, those, those shared contact points. And as a gym, you've got to be really on it, particularly around bathroom facilities where people are touching doors and taps and, 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 and different surfaces. That is where a lot of those infections will get transmitted. And that's completely separate to what's going on on the map. Mm. Yeah, okay. And then you obviously mentioned about cleaning your attire. Um, so cleaning your geese. Um belts should you be cleaning those as well ideally i mean they don't get as sweaty as a general rule if you launder things at 60 degrees that kills most things interesting 60 degrees interesting be, but the flip side is i find it shrinks everything this well. is this is where it i was going it. yeah yeah so, so so i never wash my geese above 40 because i don't want them to shrink right. they're bloody expensive and they're meant to be pre-shrunk but they still shrink so is it, do I just need to buy a bigger size and wash them at 60? Because that, that might be, yeah. people may not be washing their geese beyond 30 or 40. Mm. What do you wash yours at? 60. 16? Cassie's on it though, isn't she? She's, she's, she's OCD, mate. Yeah. Have, I smell nice tonight when you're you rolling. You do, mate, to be fair. <laughs> smell nice, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So in regard to washing geese, is that the advice that it should be on 60? Uh, yeah. Again, it's, in an ideal world, that's what you would do. Yeah. Okay. Um, in our in our in our gym, we have people rolling on the mats. I run the the gym for them, so I'm I'm the PT in the gym. Sometimes people get straight off the mats, sweaty rash guards, come straight up to the gym, and then work out in the gym. So, if they're doing that, my concern and, and I've I've raised this is that they then these pores, these whatever, this sweat is drying off. A lot of the time, they'll go up there and they do weights, so they'll they'll cool down, sweat still on them doing bench press, you know, quite casually doing this and that. If they're doing that, are they then just spreading those fungus pores if they've got them or creating them while they're up in that gym? Yeah. <laughs> is that, is that what's pretty much happened? I'm pretty, I try and clean yeah. as much as I can, but yeah. would you, would you say that's probably not advisable? Maybe for them, uh, more advisable would be for them to be on the mats, go off the mats, have a shower and then come up to the gym. Would that be, would that be better like yeah. hygiene practice? Again, it's all about minimizing the number of, of touch points. And I, I think a shower might be a little bit too draconian that, that you know, to ask people to shower before they transition from the mats to the gym. I don't know how, how well people would comply with that. Yeah. But the very least, getting them to wash their hands. Have, have you ever seen the state of someone when they get off the mats? 
Yeah, I guess their whole point. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, it's yeah. like you've just, like, yeah, <laughs> jumped yeah. in a swimming pool. Yeah, come out enough, full of sweat. Of 20 people of 20 sweat. people <laughs> sweat. That's <laughs> <laughs> disgusting. Do you know what I mean? It's not like... Yeah. It's slimy. It's, a, it's, a bit, yeah. it's even worse if, you know, yeah. you, you know what you like after yeah. a CrossFit workout. Yeah, yeah. Time's up by five. Okay. <laughs> that's yeah, the only way case, yeah, seeing it like that that's a really good point Danny yeah, uh, which case probably would be yeah, <laughs> helpful to have a shower but you know th this comes out you've got to make it easy for people you, you've got to provide the right facilities you've got to have your hand sanitizer right where people are going to see it uh, and just set up your systems your processes in a way that that just flows that happens consistently yeah and in fairness again to, to Danny's earlier point where we train at Phil Martial Arts it's the facility is excellent there's, yeah, there's hand sanitizers everywhere beautiful shower facilities so people do really have the ability to say fucking clean there so they should right. yeah get. yeah 100 yeah. yeah um i was going to ask about showering um so again probably like crossfit one thing that you find a lot with jiu-jitsu because it's very uh sort of communal and, and people are together and you'll train and then it's not uncommon for people to sit around chatting for half an hour um drying off still in their rash guys and their geese you know is there a period of time that's optimal for showering after you stop training in order to best prevent these infections from bedding in? Uh, not really. I think obviously the sooner you shower, the less surfaces you're going to then be in contact with if you did have an active infection or um, then, yeah, the sooner the sh you shower, the better. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Um, and anything in particular you should be showering with in regard to soap? Most, uh, the physical action of using soap on the skin will clear off most things. Yeah. You can get um, medicated soap. You've seen that. Um, it's got antimicrobial properties to it, particularly antibacterial. Some people who get a lot of folliculitis, a lot of boils, particularly on their kind of buttocks or thighs, um, they might benefit from a kind of medicated antimicrobial, antibacterial soap. It can, because of, as we said, staph aureus lives on your skin. Some people just have higher levels of it than others. Mm -hmm. And they're more prone to it than causing boils and folliculitis and infections. And those people think if you get a lot of those types of infections might benefit from reducing the amount of skin carriage of staff that they have by using some like a medicated product like that. All right, perfect. Um, and in regard to, so, so we had a guy on, a jiu-jitsu guy, and he had been based out in Cameroon uh, teaching kids jiu-jitsu out there, a guy called Sam Crook. Um, and he came on, um, he's, he's back in the UK now, he came on with one of his students, uh, actually a, a, a young lad he's adopted, uh, which is an amazing story. Um, but he talked about skin infections. We was out there for four years and he, he talked, to, he joked about the fact that these kids, they would just be pretty feral, running around out in, on the farms in the mud. They'd come in, drag mud all over their mats. They'd throw their geese on, like just filthy from being out. And in the four years that he was there, he got three infections. Um, and once a week they clean their geese, I think he said. Like someone would just, they'd pay someone a fiver to bring some water down. They'd be cleaning them in the street, smash them off the ground to dry them. Uh, but he said infections weren't a major issue there. So is there anything that like, is there anything to do with our own immune systems? Like anything we should be eating? I know Eddie Brabble talks about smashing loads of yogurt. Mm. Um, is that the key? Do we just need to eat more yogurt and that stops it? <laughs> I mean, like, but, yeah. but is, is there something that we should be doing, whether it's our, gut microbiome or, or anything like that that would help us just fight these conditions yeah it's a, it's a great question paul and how can we prevent this and I, I still want to emphasize the role that example there i can't give you a scientific explanation why in those relatively unsanitary conditions your mate saw less skin infections i mean that sounds like cameroon is a hot hot climate you know great breeding ground for those kind of things uh again i'm not sure why that was the case um so sanitation, there's a, a well-described scientific link between poor levels of personal hygiene and sanitation and risk of skin infections. That is universal in literature. I'm not going to dispute that. Uh, there's a lot of talk um, in terms of natural remedies and kind of more holistic medicine in the role of um, dietary modification, you know, things like acidophilus and uh, certain kinds of sugars in your diet and, and the role that plays in your skin microbiome and things. I mean, it's an active area of research. I don't think we have all the answers yet, but from the literature that I've seen, I think the, 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 the kind of foods you eat are unlikely to have a direct impact on your risk of contracting things like ringworm and uh, other skin infections. 
uh, definitely, I think for me, it's a bit of a distraction. It, it, diet is important in many other ways. A healthy, balanced diet will will have re- many health benefits. But I try and steer people away from obsessing over subtleties of the diet with this false promise that that will somehow magically transform them whether or not they get ringworm yeah all right so yeah it's more about the uh, external environment and cleaning that's what the science is telling us at the moment yeah